1.8 million of revenue and VAT is killing this business. We've got a frustrated business owner that wants to sort out these turnover taxes. Well, I've got some great ideas on what he might be able to do. So strap yourselves in and listen in. Hello, campers. Welcome back to Business Broadcast. JB, we're back. Here we, we are. are. We are top, top YouTube sensations. We are. Chad's yeah. reminded us to talk about. Yeah, we need to uh, say a big thank you to. I mean, this is a very fast growing YouTube channel. Um, what we're doing here, we're already over 2,000 subscribers, yeah. which is way more impressive than getting followers on LinkedIn and Instagram and stuff. It's, yeah, really, it's actually quite hard, isn't it? It YouTube's is very hard. Still hard. Yeah. yeah, well, I mean, I've been doing the other channel seven years now and i think we're on 72k and this one's already hit 2k and getting really good listens really good watch time so thank you so many uh so many thanks to all of you that are subscribing and if great have, comments as well the comments, comments are, are really really in depth and people are actually now having conversations in the comments which we've is got amazing. a good audience we've yeah, got a good brilliant. audience um, and thank you very much so if you are watching this uh, on youtube and you haven't subscribed go and bloody subscribe please there you go click that Click the, is that a, a subscribe button? Do it now. Let's do it together. Mm. There you go. Thank you very much. Um, should we talk about our guest today? Yes. Uh, ben let's. Walker. Um, who's some of the us. feedback on YouTube has been, you two are just asking about for 20 minutes now and we don't like it. No. <laughs> Which no. makes me and you just want to do it a little yeah, bit more. Uh, look, look, this is a community and I think business can be fun and we can have a little chitty chat chat and have some yeah. fun at the same time. Taking the mick out of you is why I'm prepared to do this every week. Fine. Uh, I can't even mock you back because you've come. You've come in. I mean, clothes that have been given to you, but you look a oh, million. Yeah. You look a million. Yeah, if you're dollars. watching us on YouTube, I'm, I'm wearing some clothes from Michael Fratowick, um, who's a tailor from Poland. That's why he's got that surname. But if you do want any nice clothes, go and check him out um, on Instagram or send me a private message, and I'll put you in touch with him. Did he put the whole outfit together? Well, I so put did, it together. Did, did, but he, these... did he give you the tie and the shirt combo as well? He gave me the ties, giving me the little pocket square thing. What's your thinking on a different tie and, co and pocket square? Just because I'm so bold and my personality is just so out there. <laughs> it's just so out there. But he's it, just crazy, guys. Here's the thing I like to, because he, cause he's an immigrant entrepreneur, literally come to the UK. And these are some of the best people we have in the UK economy. Literally come here with nothing and build businesses from scratch. I love that. Yeah, because they have to. They have they to have make to, it work. Yeah. There is no plan B. Yeah, yeah. Good you on. think about when you have immigrant entrepreneurs that you know go to any country in the world, they leave the stability of their home, their mm. family, and usually just come with Nothing. very little money. Yeah, yeah. Literally a plane fare uh, or uh, you know a ferry fare, whatever it is, yeah. and then they work super hard and build something in one generation. It, it amazes me. Yeah, and it's a story that you hear so frequently. You kind of like you get numb to it a little bit, but. You, how many times you heard someone like I've turned up had fifty dollars or fifty pounds? Yeah. But imagine backing yourself to that level. You don't speak the language. You've got no connections, no network. Yeah. And you've got fifty quids worth of runway. Yeah, absolutely. That'd be a good YouTube series. We could drop you into a foreign country, James Sinclair in Uzbekistan, with only thirteen rubles. Can he survive? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That'd be good. I'd watch that. Anyone else up for that? Chuds, yeah. he'd like that. Chuds likes it. Good. If you'd like to watch that, just just uh, comment Uzbekistan in the comments, <laughs> please, and we'll, we'll make sure that happens. No, no, I, I, I'm a big fan of immigration. Lots of people um, put immigration down, but we, we absolutely... We need it, don't we? We absolutely do need it. I don't, I'm not a fan of people taking the mick out of the system, but hardworking individuals that want to work, like we should be very open to that, in my opinion. There you go. We don't want to get political, but we've, no. we've walked that tightrope, haven't we? No. Uh, today's guest, do you want to talk about today's guest a little bit? Yeah, who, who, who have we got on, JB? You tell us who we've got. Today's guest, by the way, is going to be flipping fantastic. See what I've done there? It's gymnastics. Come on, flipping. wake up, Sinclair. Oh, flipping, oh, right, my yeah, good. God, it. really? Yeah. You, your, your mind is elsewhere. Come on, you, you caught your own reflection, didn't you, on the way in? You <laughs> stunned yourself with how good looking you are these days. <laughs> you don't where to go next. Yes, our, uh, our guest today is from EA Gymnastics. Ben Walker is the fella. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> How long has it been going? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, you, this is your part of it. Yeah. Uh, he's been going four to five years. What sort of money are we doing? £130,000 worth of flipping goodness every single month. Which impresses me because the business is only five years old and, you know, people, that, that you have to take your hat off to that. Yeah, that's that's some going, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, team members, he has got team members. He's got a hundred plus, but he's got lots of part time and younger staff. Yeah, that that would be tough to manage, and all in different places. With you know, you're hiring a school, yeah. I'm guessing, and you've probably got twenty schools you're hiring and leisure centres and stuff. You've like got that. experience. A lot of 
people in who work in your farm parks attractions must be younger yeah yeah but they're guess. all coming to one place which i think is oh okay fair enough yeah, i mean so this this is a, like spread a, out this is like a looking back into my past this sort of business is very hard to, yeah to turn into a commercially profitable enterprise in my opinion i just think you've got all these different facets mm. to manage all these different schools all these different locations my worry for these types of businesses as well is out of them 100 part-time staff they will have the relationships with your customer and some of them will just say look i'm gonna set up on my own do you want to come and join me yeah, now yeah. um and if you think that isn't going to happen you're delusional yeah um so yeah what's the challenges in the business uh challenge number one is getting into units or space for gymnastics clubs so that sort of harks back to what we talked about a couple of seconds ago challenge number two vat charging in children's services you mentioned it in the intro yeah. at the beginning part there. this is one of the biggest things you know that decentifies people to grow in these sectors because as soon as they go over eighty five thousand, yeah they got to pay 20 percent of their turnover over yeah and it actually stops people growing in many cases um but i i think in some of these things you can go and speak to a vat specialist and i know someone that uh, was in this gymnastic space and she won a ruling and didn't have to pay vat on her classes really so it is worth doing it um big shout out her name's action amanda action amanda so she's a sort of an action class thing and it took five years and she fought hmrc and won got a barrister really? involved oh, yeah good yeah on her. they wanted hundreds of thousands i mean it, it was eye-watering amounts yeah and she said no no I, I think it's education and i'm looking after the children because child care is non-vatable right some of these classes in some times they are vatable like private education like when you've got there's some gray area and it's well worth especially at 1.8 million of turnover yeah paying a couple of grand to go and speak to a VAT specialist yeah, to see if there is a hokey pokey way. I was speaking to someone yesterday actually about this. It's got a Kit McGrath Centre. Oh, uh, okay. Like so the like, learning like a after school clubs. Yeah, and um, she, she's doing uh, in excess of a million pounds worth of turnover and is not paying VAT because she went and got and sought specialist advice from a swanky VAT accountant that wrote to HMRC and they come up with a an arrangement. So is there like a definition of what would be classed? Because if you're teaching a child, surely that is education. What I'm concerned about here is I feel like James Burr and James Sinclair are verging on giving VAT giving advice. advice. Specialist are, bad yeah, advice. The specialist My accountant dad is turning in yeah. his grave right now going, shut up, you idiot. You don't know no, what I'm talking about. What we are advising is you go and see a tax specialist. that specialist to give you advice on here. And I'm just telling you about stories that I've been told and I cannot confirm or deny those stories are true. Uh, Thanks, I, I'm Judge. just trusting the people that tell me those things are of that case and i on um on amanda's one i definitely did read the case law on that because she put it on linkedin and everywhere yeah i've never um, seen it do you yeah. think it helped that she was boris johnson's child's party entertainer that was, that was afterwards yeah <laughs> oh, was it oh, she, she yeah. loves she loves her <laughs> post and a celeb pic yeah if she watches not? this amanda she she's the, is she she's great. Anyone like she's her. worked with, there's a post right, about yeah, her. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so that's that. That's challenge two. Challenge three, making money and promoting it as it's being made from children. And we talked about this before and you said, is this like an imposter syndrome thing? But what I think Ben was getting at is the fact that as a business, obviously they're, they're doing quite well. Yeah. But he can't really, and especially if he wants to turn this into a franchise, which is one of his plans, he can't really go, we're doing 1.8 million quid. Mm. Teach your kids to do handstands and roly polies like that last time i checked barbie and mattel and disney didn't care have you ever had any pushback on on it because obviously you talk about why you are such a fan of the nursery sector because of lifetime value the fact that they are touching on they have to come back to you four times in quick succession is is good profit profit margin stuff i think if you said to your customers we're only making five ten percent net profit they would go all right it's mm. not about what you turn is it it's not about it's about what you make so have you never had any pushback or because you because not really because i like to think we're good value for money uh, 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 as a rule of thumb fair enough someone's just walked in here i've no idea hopefully he's the seagull catcher all right upstairs um where does he want to be in one year is a question that we always like to ask um he wants a franchise running with at least one franchisee so he's on the franchise game again i worry about people franchising low barrier to entry businesses like this mm okay you if you own the property that the franchisee operates out of or the lease that will protect you yeah um, had that conversation yesterday with that person about kit mcgrath as well that that's a franchise isn't it you buy mm -hmm. into the the franchise 
it's no barrier to entry and someone could just set up a new kit McGrath down the road and uh, there's no rules on that yeah, now as as franchises have developed there are rules and stuff in place but yeah. if the corporate entity just wants to do it themselves which i think is the case in this situation um they could just set it up themselves what so with kit mcgrath is it like a education model that they've got that's unique or is it are they just like a marketing company that yes yeah, so if you leads? if you think about this this gymnastics or you're doing a football coaching club or something like that what do you need 500 a thousand pounds you know you got to buy some footballs and try and rent a bit of grass and off you go. Your sporting prowess is really coming out there. Yeah. Get some footballs in a bit, bit of grass. I, no, I, I think, you know, the, the, the longer I spend in business, if you, you know, the, the whole aim and the discipline of business is to build commercially profitable enterprise and work without you in it, how do you do that? You try and be as high barrier to entry as possible and you have moats around your, around your castle that stop other people taking the castle from you. The reality is, though, most people want to do the easy stuff, don't they? And they don't want to do the hard stuff about building castles and moats. But if you are going to go into the folly that is entrepreneurship and building a business, and it's going to take a lot of time, and it's much harder than anyone ever thinks it is. Um, you know that, Jay. You, you be, you've been in, in lots of businesses, and I've been doing it for 20 years. This is not an easy thing. Um, and you might as well do something a bit bigger because it's, I think, just as difficult or if not more difficult yeah. to run a small thing. It's a shame you don't know that on day one because when you're going to go down the difficult path, you might as well go down the difficult, difficult path because you're yeah, going to take the walk a... down it anyway. Whereas you get a couple of years in, you're like, oh, this is quite Well, it's difficult. funny you should say that. Uh, that. That difficult, difficult thing is something, I say there's two types of businesses, easy, difficult and difficult, difficult. Mm. And I've done this, uh, i done a seminar yesterday called Investorpreneur, which was high level entrepreneurs, about 35 people that are well on their way, you know, yeah. 2 million plus revenue, employing people. Um, they're over the, um, uh, the, start the one up man band, yeah, yeah. you know, they're, so they're over yeah. that. And, and I said that very line yesterday that y you want to choose businesses that are easy, difficult, rather than difficult, difficult. Um, one of my uh, wife's friends has just started a candle business. I was like, God solo barrier to entry yeah you know I, I went on alibaba and found the exact same candles you know they're trying to sell them uh you know they're trying to be joe malone you know the, yeah, these things yeah. are very difficult to yeah. do um you know and i think you know with a thousand pounds you could be in your candle business yeah and so, so would I, you class that as difficult difficult yeah i think that's very difficult yeah difficult not impossible so I what think, would be one of your easy difficult businesses uh, things that have got moats around them where people buy from you regularly. Like, how often do people need candles from you? Yeah, once every you know, three months. And look, usually that's a, as a process of network marketing. Yeah, yeah. You know, your friends. Which friends. is a hard model in and of itself, isn't it? Which and, you, and you lay the guilt on your friends and family to buy from you that wouldn't necessarily even want to buy those yeah. candles. And if truth be known, they probably want to buy a Joe Malone one because yeah. they want to buy into brand because that's the way the world works. Um, and so I just, uh, you know, I want to choose population, hungry audience. Well, I think people completely underestimate a hungry audience just makes life so much easier, doesn't yeah. it? You know, if you've got an audience that are very hungry and they want to buy from you right now, yeah. look at that tuition business. Like, people want their children to have extra tuition. That's why venture capital and private equity money are putting in money into that sector as long as it's high barrier to entry where they own the locations and they've got moats around the business. It all works out. Mm. Childcare, there's a hungry audience for people that want it. Healthcare, medicine, there's literally food. There's hungry audiences yeah. for those things. I suppose in those instances as well, a lot of them are what you talk about, that whole want, love and need. I've like done that yesterday, yes, love, want and need. Yeah, if people love what you do, want what they want what you do and need what you do, then you have a much higher chance of making really good money. Now, if we look at the candle scenario there, people, yeah, they love candles, they want candles, but they don't need it. Yeah. So it's not essential. Um, like it's I say, that it, business, they'll the do a guilt purchase to support their power, won't they, ordinarily? And then you've actually got to go and find proper punters and yeah. give enough value to exchange money for the service of the product. And I think one of the big things that really emphasises this is what banks led money to. And I, I always think of this as, a, as an example, car finance. So why do banks and lenders bend the rules and give people car finance when they can just about afford it? Mm. It's because if people need their car, they will sacrifice everything else to make the car payment, yeah. to make sure 
that they still they have a car because yeah, yeah. they 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 want transport they need transport and if you really think about it people love it and mm. the best example of it is the iphone you know if people's phone breaks they cancel their day and get to the apple shop to get it sorted <laughs> yeah. out literally because they yeah. love want and need it um and so so you have to look at those things and if you're in a business where people just love and want it but don't need it it's difficult dangerous interesting so all three are the ones uh that, that do the really well uh, so car oh my, my phone's crashed now ironic you mentioned about iPhones and now my phone's crashed just got my notes on um, team members oh we covered all that off. challenge number three is the making money where do you want to be in one year franchise uh, 10 clubs that they run is another thing they want they want a full time unit in Chelmsford so that goes back to your point of sort of putting moats in and sort of protecting uh, by having a, a place where people come to much better yeah. launching or oh, launch qualifications and the insurances to external clubs we already have 10 clubs on board so he's told us before he's already been working on this behind the scenes so he's not just got sort of a me too he's, he's building up um i guess it would be ip which could be super yeah. valuable and products and services um what does the business look like when it's finished the amazon of gymnastics own the whole ecosystem providing better value and keeping more profit in the business as the profit margins are low um, yeah. Do you want to make the profit? The, do you make the profit you want to? If so, what is it? Need to double check profits, but it's around 100K plus. But based on the conversation we had offline, he thought that maybe HMRC was also scraping the data off that website, I think. He's put yeah. it very, very low, it <laughs> sounds like. Yeah. Unless HMRC are, are listening, in which case it's a very, very accurate um, reflection. Uh, data to business manages the area managers who look after four locations, focus on the growth of the business to ensure they're continuing to grow. And he's got a bunch of questions that he would like to ask you. So should we get him on? Yeah, let's get him on. Let's get him on. Ben, hello, sir. How the devil are you doing? How's it going? You all right? We are very well, thank you, my friend. Very well. Good. Thank you for being here. Welcome here, Ben. Uh, uh, you're a fellow Essex lad, I see. Well, I'm actually based, uh, more Suffolk-based, uh, in a small little town called Lowestoft. Oh, lovely yeah, part lovely. of the world. Yeah. Good crabbing down yeah, there. The most easterly point you can get, yes. It's on Top Gear once, and... Uh, yeah, I know last darkness, time. Which is the claim to fame. So talking about your bit, how did you find out about us? Is, uh, did you find us on YouTube or you've been a long-time audio listener and then converted? Uh, two, two ways, actually. So I um, watched, I just watched your, one of your podcasts come up as a suggestion on, uh, on YouTube. I watch podcasts quite often. Um, and I watched that and you said you're looking for guests. So I thought oh, it'd be good to you know, pick your brains and, and gain some information on this. And the other day, I was around a friend's house, um, Lucy and Mark, and they were like, oh, we know James. And I was like, yeah? And they're like, yeah, we, we used to do stuff with James. And they've been helping us kind of get to where we've got to already. Um, Lucy, I don't know who know. Lucy and Mark are. Can you give me a bit more? Mark Vernon and Lucy Johnson. Right. It's vaguely coming to me. What yeah, do they do? They do, some, uh, they do, they, you do um, like, business courses as well oh um, i know who they are yes it's all come back to me now yes i know who they yeah. are yes okay so cool about that as well so well okay right well let's try and let's try and grow the business so so you're doing 130k a month one of the things that i know that i think you should be doing that i know you're not doing is producing monthly management accounts I don't think you're doing uh, that are i you? actually watched one of your pod there was that podcast i watched when you were saying oh or it might have been on a a YouTube one you've done where you were mentioning uh, as you grow, you need to do monthly managed accounts and this is going to help with, with finances and um, gain investors and doing things. I literally am in the process of getting it and we'll start doing them as from the 8th of next month. So I will be getting managed profit and loss reports um, every single month. You mustn't like that. Should be this. It should be in the same priority as paying your staff and paying your bills. It, it, it is up there. You just cannot grow a bit. I mean, it is a folly to have a one point eight million pound revenue business. Let me just say it one more time. It's a folly to have a one point eight million pound revenue business and not know your monthly numbers and rely on annual accounts. The second you put that into place, and the reason I'm labouring the point is because I really want to make sure that's the one thing you get off of this podcast. Um, of course, I'm labouring yeah. the point because you will become more profitable overnight. Everyone does as soon as they know if it's good or bad news. And and you know what? Sometimes bad news is really good for us because it really channels our thoughts on going forward. And it makes you, you know, I repaired all the holes in the bucket in my business from management accounts because I'm like, oh, right, this is a really bad month. What am I going to do next year to repair that month? Do I need different re revenue streams? Do I do different products that people want to buy in that particular month? 
you know, I'm guessing that like August, for example, when all the school holidays are off, that's probably not a good month for you unless you've built a holiday club. I'm not sure. We we actually, um, it's, to be honest with you, the numbers aren't that bad because it's so structured. Yeah. So every single month, they all pay on the first. We run all year round. So we build them. Come on. Oh, that's like good. We run for 47 weeks of the year. And we charge them on a monthly basis based on this. Yeah. And they pay on the first of the First of the month. So for us, there's a recurring income no matter what. Ultimately. Yeah, it's great. I love so that. So that's our basic our basic numbers. So I know already as a standard that all of our bills, all of our outgoings and everything is completely covered by the first of the month payment. Yeah. Yeah, no, no. I mean, that part of the business, the residual income part of the business, the predictability of the business, I absolutely love. Um, let's just quickly go into the second one. Um, getting into, sorry, then you, the, the first challenge was getting into units or space for gymnastics. Please explain. Yeah, so we first of all, we started off doing, like uh, what you were explaining a little bit earlier, we would run for two days in a school hall and uh, we probably rented it out on a Saturday for five hours. And um, that was great to start with. The, there's really bad um, supply for gymnastics, but there's a lot of demand for it. So we filled up and we were doing really, really good. Um, we, had some, we had a lot of experience in gymnastics. So we were uh, attracting lots of people and doing really, really well. Um, once we'd done this, we realized early on that you don't really have very much control over what you can use and your entire business model is based on this person's facility that can just say, oh, no, you can't run anymore um, or we're shutting tomorrow, by the way, you can't come in. And that kind of scared us a lot as we started to get a little bit bigger. So in COVID, um, when we got shut, kind of stop, rather than sit back and do nothing we decided to take out bounce back loans and when everyone else was sitting back and doing nothing uh no one was buying units or renting units we were approaching the units and saying look we can't run yet but we would love to take this unit on um ready for when we're done so we actually acquired two units in lockdown and we bought loads of gyms out that were shutting down and selling so we kitted out loads of gyms and we got two units so that when we come out of covid we kind of opened with two facilities that were our own that we could run full time from. Um, and then after that, we've done the same sort of model and we've got maybe, I think we've got six facilities that are actually inside a, inside a unit, one of which is 20,000 square foot. Um, some of which are, you know, 4,000 square foot. And now it's just certain locations. We find it quite hard to find units. Chelmsford is our biggest struggle. And that's the one that really we're, trying to find somewhere because we've got hundreds of children on a waiting list ready to go but we can't get into a facility that's big enough to accommodate the supply that we need to get and that's where we're struggling because we're leisure and a lot of landlords just go oh what do you do and we say we're doing gymnastics we'd love to come in here we want to do this we're doing this for the community um but the landlords just go no i want to trade in here i want storage i want distribution i want something nice and easy i don't have to muck around with it and no and that's pretty much the answer we get all the time in Chelmsford. So um, that's the main so, did, let, let, I've got some ideas on that and what I would do next. But let's just come. So you've got six units that you solely use for you. And one of them's 20,000 yeah. square foot. Yes, yeah. I mean, 20,000 square foot is double the size of this space that we're recording this podcast in. I mean... What does that cost you in rent for a 20,000 square foot unit? I think it's about £15,000, including VAT a month, all in. Bloody hell, yeah, so that... And where is that in the world? Milton Keynes. Blimey. I mean, and so that must generate a big chunk of your £1.8 million of revenue, that place. No, we actually acquired that recently in uh, the last one. So we we realised we it was taking too long for us to find a unit um get in there and kind of get the customers in start it all up get the staff so we started looking at taking over places that were struggling not doing very well and putting our systems in place that we know work and uh increasing the revenue so we actually took that one uh probably nine months ago now what was it before uh it was so it was a gymnastic club but it was losing around eight thousand pounds per month um 
so we took it on and put our systems in place and it's now back in the green and it's starting to do a lot more than what it was um beforehand so it's it probably only makes at the moment i'd say two thousand pounds of profit however it was losing eight thousand pounds and we've got so much scope we could double what it's doing as a turnover now quite easily Wow, I'm sure. See, this is this is different to what I got in the notes, really. So you're actually physical locations, people coming to you, but you're also doing some going into schools as well, still. So we've got uh, we don't do schools, but we do leisure centres. So one of our gyms, what we've done was again the same sort of thing. We went into a leisure centre, and we were running out of it maybe three days a week, same sort of thing. There was no real good units that were around. But I noticed that inside the leisure centre, there was a bowls green. And inside there, it was probably used, I would say, for maybe three or four hours in, in the day at max. And I'd go in there, and every time we went down there, I would look in, into it and think, this space is so underused, it's unbelievable. And we had a massive waiting list in Thetford, and we were trying to find some spaces. So what we'd done is we approached the leisure centre manager, and over about a year of kind of you know persuading and explaining what we could do and how we could utilise the space, uh, we managed to strike up a deal. So now we run full time out of a leisure centre as well. So that's another one of our sites. And the only other two sites that we have that are pack away gyms are in, one in Chelmsford and one in like a small little town, um, which is just more of like a satellite, really. It runs four days a week. Um, but Chelmsford is somewhere we really need to find a full time home. Wow. We essentially test the market with normally a leisure centre. Um, you know, it's a lower kit out. The kit outs aren't as low as what you maybe think they are. A minimum kit out is kind of ten to twenty thousand pounds as a minimum um, to kind of get yourself going. And once you've got the equipment, it's then you get the children in, you try and see what it's like, and you test the demand. And then after we normally test it, we go right. This place is working. We've built up a reputation in the area, and then we then look to expand that into a full time facility afterwards. All right, so I'm just uh, there's so many questions to, to try and help here. Um, so, so going back to Chelmsford, so you're generating what twenty grand a month from Chelmsford in revenue? Are you uh, as we stand uh, today? I can tell you the numbers. You give me two seconds. I've got them in front of me. Chelmsford. Sorry, one second. Chelmsford mate. About one second. If I, I can tell you what I made this month, if that helps. That'll make life a bit easier. Sounds good. He's got that PNO, no? £17,000 this month. How much? And it runs £17,000 this month. I love I love my guessing. 20k was not bad, was it? So it's like I'm the mystic meg of entrepreneurship. <laughs> uh, so, so, that, that, so you're bringing in that 17K. So out of that 17K, you've got 20% VAT, yeah? Yeah. And then you've got staffing. What what percentage is your staffing? Staffing. Oh, uh, staff is around about £5,000. Okay, so 5K on that. Uh and then what? Then you got some rent to the leisure centre. Yeah, yeah I, I, it's around eighteen hundred pounds. So let's say two k. So far, I think there. So then, what, so you make about seven k profit on Chompsford as we are today. Well, that's just off the basics. That's off the, oh, the basics. We also have yeah. We also do badges every quarter, which is seven pounds a badge. We also do insurance. So well, uh, which, I mean, I don't, what is a badge? I mean, I know what a badge is, but so a badge is like if you do karate or martial arts, you get belts. Yep. So with the belts, it, that's our version of gymnastics of belts. So every quarter, we get the gymnast to take part in a badge, and it's a great grading system for the kids to kind of see how they're doing, give some feedback, let the parents know how they're doing, and for the children to kind of gain like a reward as part of doing that. And um, we probably make about. Four pound every child every quarter off a badge. Okay, fine. So there's a little bit right. And then we have insurance and club membership, which is billed at thirty three pounds a year. What to each parent? To every parent, yeah. Okay. So all of this comes in in a big lump on the first of the month, and you pay your wages, and then at the end you yeah you, know, you make 
you know, you make it sounds like you're making good money. This is more high barrier to entry than I first thought because you own the locations. Um, I, especially when you've got a 20,000 square foot location, although very expensive, it absolutely puts a moat around the business. Not everyone can just go and get one of those. Um, in terms Is it mu as much of a moat if it's rented as opposed to yeah, owning it? I think a lot of people would go. So my, my concern for your type of business, um, uh, my concern for your type of business, Ben, is that people will go, right, These are, I know the parents, I know them, um, I've built a relationship with them, I'll just start up against you. I can go and get a legislator for yeah, 800 quid. that doesn't quid. really happen. It's extremely hard to set up. And the reasons why is it has, it is a large equipment cost, which is hard. That is, it's not cheap. Even, yeah, but, even but if I, you went I, really I know basic, you think, I think... Yeah, I mean, ten twenty k is low barrier to entry. Most people would be able to access that from their family, remortgage their house, get a personal loan. It is super low barrier to yeah. entry. Um, don't, don't think that that. I mean, to start a business. No, it's not necessarily just that. I think it's all of them together. So it's the cost to start with. Just initially, I think it's the experience that you need, and the staff that you need, and the training. Um, and the insurance and things like that. Yeah, yeah but uh, I'm just quite hard to get. No, but once you've got all that and you've worked for you for three years and you know what you're doing and you, and they've copy you and uh, that this will happen. I, I absolutely. No, of course, I, I can imagine. But, but well. once you start saying it's a twenty thousand square foot building, most people just do not see that as something that they want to take the risk yeah. with. But you know, renting some That's space. That's one of the hardest parts is getting a space. That's why I think it's. It's safer because when you go to find somewhere, leisure centers usually are completely full and yep. you can't really rent them for less than more than maybe a couple of hours a week. So they may be able to compete with us maybe by yeah, no, I'm just a, you know, gym. I'm, I'm saying it's a good news thing that you, you start yeah, having yeah. your own units and you're the location. And that puts a moat around your castle, your business. Can I, is most of the business Monday to Friday or is it completely seven days a week no, or is it just seven weekends? Days week. yeah. Seven days a week, yeah. So like a midday on a Monday, are you taking money then or is it after school? Yeah, so we can do like they come in and the, the, the parents bring their children in. They just kind of play in the gym or we'll run like um, preschool nursery sort of style classes mm. where we come in and it's like mums and babies classes or... And how, how, did you, how did you find your customers and how did you start this? I think that would be a good... So the first thing that we've done was we were in the gymnastics sport from the age of 15. I'm, I turned 30 a couple of weeks ago and we've been doing it for years. We started it when I was 25. So we've been in the sport for a long while at a high level and we understood the ins and outs of everything. Um, so what we've done was we first of all realized that every gymnastics club in the areas have massive waiting lists. It's unbelievable. I think there was a statistic out that there's over a million children on the waiting list for gymnastics across the UK. And it's not always going to be completely accurate, but we just kind of looked at that and saw that actually this is something that we could do and we could do really well. Um, so after we'd kind of realized that there was a kind of supply issue, we wanted to open up and we literally just went about it with a marketing campaign um, with organic marketing. Um, we don't really do paid ads at the moment. It is something we're going to start looking at doing now. Um, but we've done it all organically with kind of leaflets and um, going into the schools and delivering free sessions into schools yeah. and workshops. Classic network um, marketing. Yes, yeah, completely. Okay, so that, that, that's interesting. So let, let's just quickly tap on to the, the challenges here. So getting space. I think let's get into that. What would I do if I was in this scenario? I would be contacting yeah. the local authorities. So if we was talking about Essex, I would be contacting Chelmsford because they own a, a lot of property that might be underutilised, but also the county councils. So Essex County Council. And both of these councils will have big property departments and they uh, will have underutilised properties within their portfolios. Yeah. And you say, can I speak to the head of property, please? I'd like to talk to them about some potential space they might have. And 
nearly all of the councils that I operate in, and uh, I've done this with day nurseries, um, I've done this with Marsh Farm, that's how I got Marsh Farm. These property departments in local authorities, remember there's two for every county, the, the overall county council and then the boroughs. Uh, and that they over the years just collect assets like loads of libraries just sitting there empty doing nothing mm. um, they've got office blocks just sitting there empty doing nothing um, and you need to try and get a coffee with and make sure they they know of you and speak to them regularly because something might come up in six months time but not now uh, and that's where I've got some of my best property l locations for my businesses yeah, I think that'd be really, really helpful. It's something that we've got on our list now to do because we've exhausted options of speaking to local estate agents. Um, yeah, yeah, because so the you next need to be best to get to the councils. So, so I know, uh, you know, lots of councils. They go, oh, we must do something with that. Twenty-four months later, it's still got nothing done with it. But if you knock on the door, so my day nursery in Basildon was as a result of speaking to the local authority. My day nursery in Stevenage is a result of speaking to the local authority. Um, and the Marsh Farm is as a result of speaking to the local authority. Um, actually, one, two, three, four, five. I've got six of my landlords are local authorities across the portfolio of businesses. They've got... I would say I would say most county councils are sitting on billions of pounds worth of property. And you going in like a sales pitch? Are you putting like you know, a little pitch deck? No, to not them really. No, no. It's it, 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 not even that complicated, really? JB. You just ring up their property head of property. I was about to look, look. Most local authorities and local governments are way more sleepy than the commercial sector. Yeah, I yeah. think that's a, a fair way of saying it. Yeah, there is no immediate pressure. There's no urgency in those roles. Is yeah, there? I tell you, the other person that you should definitely speak to as well is the NHS. The NHS are sitting on billions. Mm. billions of pounds worth of property fire service police I mean, you see police are selling off um fire uh, police stations all the bloody oh, time yeah. now. they've got so much property government um and they're just not doing stuff with it and so I, that's where i'll be focusing a lot of my time and that's where you get the best deals as well because you know if they put it on zoopla and right move you might compete with other people um and if you go to them ready to go bish bash bosh here's some dosh and you get juicy rent-free periods um, because the, usually the properties are in disrepair and you're going to go and put them in a better place. And it's just that no one has... Because the way government works, you think about it, yes, you have a general election every four or five years, so there's a change of colour there. But they've got all these local ones as well. So really, every two and a half years, if you compound local and general elections, mm. there's, there's new leadership every two and a half years. That's why nothing gets done. Yeah. That there alone is, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. is the big problem. Just as someone gets in on a local election, <laughs> it's a change of direction. A, oh, we've got gen and, and usually they can't do big decisions around election time. Right, so that okay. like, oh, as an election in ninety days, let's just put all decisions on hold. So really, you've got then like, new leadership comes yeah, in and yeah. they take ninety days yeah, to work yeah, out yeah, what's yeah, wrong. Yeah, 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 yeah. Lost half a year. Yeah, exactly. Wow, that's a good little hack, isn't it? So, th so that's that one. Um, Challenge number two, VAT charging in children's services. Now, my friend Ben, this is a challenge for many, many people in your sector because you can't claim any VAT back, so it's just a, a cost off your turnover, isn't it? Yeah. And it's very frustrating. Um, and um, my, my advice on to this is, uh, I spoke about this in the pre-chat chat, if you was listening in, um, about a friend of mine that, took HMRC to court and won in a sector that's where you're in. Um, so I would reach out to her. It's Action Amanda um, and her barrister, who I doubt is called Brilliant Bruce or something. <laughs> you know? um, Jolly John. Uh, Jolly John, the barrister. Jilly and barrister. he's a, a VAT specialist. And you just need to have a conversation with someone that's got letters after their name that does this day in, day out to see if there is um, anything that you can do. Yeah, no, that sounds really, really helpful. Now, I've got some quick advice for this as well. Now, remember, or remember, so we're in Roller City right now. If you come into Roller City with your children and you rent um, roller skates off of me because 
that's a children's item and therefore non-vatable and i can put that as part of the admission which i can reduce off of my vat bill and i've got a hmrc clearance letter to say that i can do that so you want to find all those little things if there's any health and safety stuff that they need to wear you, uh, you know or use that you provide as part of a rental so if you're taking kids climbing for example and they need a harness that they need to rent off of you otherwise they would fall off the climb and one would die that could be um, a part of your admission price could be the rental on that stuff and then books if you're giving them educational books as part of the um, of the gymnastics course that's non vatable and you might be able to say look actually it's it's 30 pounds a month to come to gymnastics 15 pounds of it's an online book course 15 pounds of it's the lesson course and you can reduce your vat bills mm. these have to be legitimate and you have to be real you can't just make all this up you know it has to be real um, you need to look at these things because it's not fair these turnover taxes no, 100%. I think something we've, we've started doing is, uh, well, the children's clothing isn't, uh, you don't pay VAT on children's clothing. We supply their own, our own, we print and supply everything for all the uniforms that we do. Um, we also do that now yeah, for yeah. other gymnastics clubs. Yeah, well. yeah, so that, that's not um, that's but, but I'm saying if there was, if there was help. something in with yeah. that. Yeah, if, it, if it's like health and like the roller skating rink or the harnesses on, um, I mean, I don't know your business completely. I'm just giving you some ideas. You're going to have to go and do your own research. Yes, of course. Challenge number Does three. Digital, yeah, sorry, sorry. digital products count towards the educational if it's a book. element. If what, it's about, a book. what about ebooks? Do e-books yeah, count? ebooks are non vatable. So if he said like in that March. That changed in the, um, they changed that in the COVID uh, pandemic. Ah, newspapers okay. are non-vatable now so it used to be that only printed newspapers were non-vatable or zero rated oh, should really? i say and then uh subscriptions for newspapers were vatable um, but they changed that um in the pandemic so uh, if there's different like key stage learning levels if there was like a pdf that went out with in in february we're doing this type of roly-poly tumble and there was some legitimate, like we've emailed you the education part of it, and you could bundle. And so you still having to go. If it's like- seen as a book, right? But again, look, like, you know, this is monumental for your size of business. Look at him tapping. Are you tapping this all away? Are you? He's got like a. He's the vat is hitting so oh, hard. Sorry, he's having to use a typewriter. I'm right. I'm making sure to write it all down. I've got well, here's to, the good uh, news. We <laughs> actually record this podcast for everyone else. It's not just a one-to-one conversation. So when it comes out, you can listen to it. <laughs> Uh, oh, you've how- got to realise it. By the time it's come out, I should have already saved the van. Uh, yeah, yeah good about, man. Oh, I've got the new problems now. Um, but but like with all these things, when it's monumental for your business, you know, it is worth paying a few thousand pounds to a specialist fat accountant. Yeah, not your standard accountant. You know, like if you want to find out about stamp duty and land tax tax rates, you, you go to a stamp duty and land tax accountant would there be vat specialists in sectors as well would there be like a vat absolutely. gymnastics yeah, specialist absolutely agency there is. Like yeah that. yeah and sometimes they don't know enough and then you need to get a vat barrister that right. really does know it you know yeah because mm. what was amazing about amanda you know she's a one-man band and she went no no i'm not having this and she went all the way she i think it cost her like 150 grand in legal fees yeah and she took hmrc to court she I mean, documented the whole thing as well didn't yeah, she yeah. I've seen it on facebook bloody proud and yeah she's done and then really hmrc good. went yeah yeah no you're right now that's what really annoys me about you know she how many people don't say no i'm going to go all the way yeah it's a classic david and goliath moment yeah of course yeah. yeah and so well done her yeah she won go and check it out go and check out that that van, um, we've got some questions you are like to ask me. I want to answer these questions because I think they're going to be valuable for the audience. So do, do you know them or do you want JB to read them out? If JB could read them out, please. That yeah, because be you've forgotten. Oh, sorry, sorry, I think that's the way we're going to do these questions going forward, JB. Just uh, Okay. Uh, we shouldn't really tell our listeners exactly how we're going to make this podcast better. Over, yeah. over a chicken curry, <laughs> shouldn't yeah. we? Lunchtime, but yeah, there you yeah. go. Um, um, so you ask the questions and I'll answer. Okay, do you want them all, do you? I think we should because they're very good for here. They are very good. Okay, so um, we always ask our guests if they would like to ask a few questions. To multi-entrepreneur and VAT specialist, James C. Clare, but not, not advice. Not advice. Um, so one of the questions are... Uh, are you number? trying to get us back <laughs> I just see how far I can push. What's he now? Gonna, we're going to start giving medical advice next. 
<laughs> really get us in trouble. We'll do fitness advice. You uh, yeah. skip around the ring before uh, yeah. we started. Um, right, question number one was, I know you're in the nursery business and want to know how you structure your services with VAT and company structure. There's no VAT on childcare. So that's the answer to that. On any part of it? Zero. Uh, it's not zero rated. I wish it was zero rated. It's exempt. There's two different things here. Again, not giving out more tax. So, oh, actually, this isn't tax not advice. This is, not this is just a, there's zero rated, which is what you want. And then there's VAT exempt, which is uh, better, but not what you want. Because if it's zero rated, you get to claim all your VAT back. And I'm so, so bakery, but like our bakery, for example, is zero rated. But if we have an electric bill or, I don't know, any bill that has 20% VAT on it, there's... Um, you can claim all the VAT back on that. Uh, if you've got rent with VAT on it, you can claim it all back. If you're VAT exempt, you don't charge VAT, but you can't, can't claim even. it. Yeah, so you want to be zero rated. So is if he, if Ben's only looking after kids, and yes, he's teaching them, like, would that not class as no, child I don't care because the child. Well, that's is why in your that's care. why I'm saying he if he is looking after them and for more than four hours, uh, there is some rules. I understand. I don't. I'm not. I think I know what they are, but I don't want to say them on the Fine. podcast in case. But that's why I go and t check your specialist out. But I absolutely know day nurseries, full time childcare is VAT exempt, not zero rated. So we don't pay VAT, but we also can't claim any back. Right. Okay. Which is, you must have quite a lot of VATable stuff that you like. Costs, well, rent. Have you not? Rent. Rent is um, one. Food. Food is zero rated, isn't it? Mostly. I didn't know. See, we're all we're laughing and learning here. So guys. chocolate is uh, vatable, uh, but cakes are not vatable. You must have heard the Jaffa cake VAT story. Oh yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So if it's a cake, it's non vatable. Biscuits are vatable. It might be the other way around. I can't remember. But God, why are we doing? You, oh, sorry. You're like forcing sorry. us sorry. in. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. You're so <laughs> goddamn knowledgeable. Um, all right. Question number two: How would you acquire a unit for our gymnastics club? I think I answered that. Fine. <laughs> Spiky. She <laughs> don't, don't like that question. That's why I'm having to yeah. ask with the questions to fill the time. Um, final question then was, what would you focus on if you were in my position, franchise or opening clubs themselves? Um, probably I would open the clubs myself and then franchise them out. I think How many McDonald's, clubs would you get to? McDonald's do that very well. Usually they open a site corporate owned they call it corporate owned oh, yeah. okay. so they run it as the corporate like flagships in areas no, in, in any area then oh, okay. trade it for three years then put a franchisee in it so they go to the franchisee through their vigorous selection process it's oh. like bloody X Factor to be a McDonald's franchisee and they go yep you've passed the McDonald's franchisee selection criteria have Birmingham City Centre would you ever be interested to buy a franchise of someone like that when there's a system and a process already in place, just there to is, see their system. Yes, I've often thought about that. And there is a. They're doing adverts on LinkedIn. They keep targeting me. I don't know whether they're. Who? Like, McDonald's? Yeah, they're like, oh, buy a franchise. Yeah. Well, 2.4 million, I think it is, from McDonald's. This is why I said to them, look, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll only do two at a time. 2.4, 2. <laughs> 2. I'm only doing two at a time. Uh, <laughs> look, that's funny. Um, yeah, no, but you would finance most of that through HSBC or something. So you wouldn't have to actually, you'd have to have some of the money. I was going to finance it through the Bank of Sinclair. <laughs> oh, was you now? I was, I'm taking uh, you to the interview with Ronald. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so very, they, so they, they set it up, trade it, and then franchise There is a it little, on. there is a, an old entrepreneurship phrase that the fastest way to become a millionaire is to have a McDonald's franchise. Have you ever heard that before? I have heard that. Yeah, that was, uh, as I was growing up, I remember everyone, that was the, like a phrase that yeah, people used yeah, to say. Yeah. Mm. So you would just say, how many clubs would you get to, or would you cover like a certain area and then go right now? I've got but the reason. Systems. Can I tell so the reason I would do that is because you would be able to set it up how you want it. Mm -hmm. You would then own the lease, which puts a moat around your business. Ben, are you still there, Ben? I am. Yeah, we've actually just taken on a franchise. The uh, they've just bought in and we've done exactly that. We've said, right, well, as part of your fee, we, we find source and we take on the lease of the property. We'll even uh, put the equipment in there for you. Yeah. And it's our equipment, our building, our everything. And then he will. That is the way to win. Us. That is the way to win in franchising because you, if you don't, what most people do is they want to de risk themselves. So they go, oh, I don't want to own the Here's lease. Here's a system and process, crack yeah. on. Here's yeah. our I, brand guidelines. Yeah. I don't want to own the equipment. Yeah. I don't want to. But actually, if you look at McDonald's, they are a landlord first and then an operator second. And that's, if you watch the story, the founder, 
uh, you know, that's a great lesson in making franchising work because it wasn't working until Ray Kroc then flipped that and then started owning the leases and indeed sometimes the freeholds of the property. And you can't always own the freeholds of the property because, you know, Matt Dorans want to be in Liverpool Street, you know, the station and probably Network yeah. Rail own that, but they still think it's strategic to take a long-term lease on that and then sublet that lease to the franchisees. But if the franchisee, you know, starts mucking you around... Then you've got the power to pull the, yeah. the rug from underneath them yeah. if you need to. And what's good about the, the McDonald's model is if the franchisees, you know, something happens, they get run over by a bus or, um, you know, uh, or they're not doing what they're she told, um, you know, McDonald's can just go back in and run that operation mm. from a corporate level. I think they, they still run about a third of all the sites corporately. Oh, do they? Here in the UK, I'm sure that's the case. I'm sure someone's going to put in the comments. No, wrong. It's quarter, <laughs> idiot. Why is Sinclair doing this? Yeah. So um, there we go. Right. Um, I think that's all of the questions, isn't it? That's it. That's all the questions. Did we have. help you enough, Ben? Yes, I think so. And I think you even helped me because the only question I hadn't asked at the time was, no, how that's would you lot. go about that's starting no more. a franchise? <laughs> I think you've answered it anyway. Yeah, yeah. Oh, good. So there fine. you go. Um, but we'd, we'd kind of done that anyway. We'd gone, gone about the, well, we need to have the, the gym because if they're not running it to standard, we need to be able to say, well, no, look, this is ours. You know, you can leave and we don't have to deal with anything because it's all ours. Well, are you a fan of the show? Have we made you a fan of the show? Are you going to listen more regularly to other lesson, uh, other episodes? Yes, 100%. Yeah, it's, wow. uh, it's, it's wow. nice to just hear. And I, I already from the other one, I learned about the managed accounts and that's something now that we've already started to uh, get into place and I'm already compiling together and from the 8th of every month now I will receive accurate managed accounts Beautiful. Um, every month well you're, yours uh, I mean you've got a good business here and I think with management accounts and you know a bit more experience you'll be off to the races and I'm glad to hear you're a fan of the show because we've got some good news if you're such a fan of the show you can now come see it live can't you JB wow you can indeed on the 10th of June live in the Leicester Square Theatre see your your picture is now up on a West End Theatre website. I yeah. know, but I'm also under the heading of James Sinclair's podcast, so I just look, I just look like a passenger on someone oh, else's train know, journey, you know, yeah, which but, is effectively what I am, really. But. <laughs> no, but you know, you're, you're more than a but. You're in first class. I know. My 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 dad said I'd never amount to anything. Look at me now, Dad. Come off. Got I half mean, of yeah. my beaky little face on a, on a West End stage. Yeah, but you're still on with there. my pal. Yeah. Well, it could oh, just no, be me. Oh no, no, yeah, yeah, hundred uh, percent. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be making a big deal about it. Yeah, I'll be running a subsidiary course on how a podcast can get you a West End um, show. Good I'll stuff. Like well, if you'd like to come along to that theatre show, it's bloody good value for money, and hopefully we'll see you there, Ben, because it's going to cost you about thirty quid. I think we should have a jingle to, to do a little advert for the the. If so you would like to take your business to the next level, if you have £32 spare in your pocket, <laughs> you can come along live to Leicester Square Theatre for James Sinclair, live in London. Join me and my pal Jimbo as he dishes out knowledge, information, insights and wisdoms. And don't forget, no doubt he'll make a downloadable blueprint because he loves to talk about blueprints and cheat sheets. <laughs> if you'd like to be there, oh, just click God. the link in the show notes now. Thirty-two. Pounds. I feel like we're putting a lot of pressure on I Ben. He's the only person who's had this hard sales pitch. I feel, yeah. I feel like we're double glazing salespeople at this point. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. But it's thirty-two pounds. So if you want a night out in the Leicester Square Theatre on the tenth of June, I believe it is. Isn't it is it? indeed. Now, Seven p.m. If you go onto my website, jamesinclair.net, and click on events, then there's a link. Um, I think that's the better way to do it. Or you can because that's we, for everybody, by the way, not just for Ben, who is no. being moderately financially bullied right now. This is where we're going to find out now. Ben, what are you doing on the tenth of June? He goes, "Yeah, I'm, I'm getting busy. married." <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I'm, I'm on busy. the podcast, aren't I? Well, that's hopefully, right. we hopefully we'll see you there for the business broadcast live, where you get to spend two hours with James Burt, James Sinclair to grow your business, and we're gonna it's gonna be a great night. So hopefully we'll see you there, and all other listeners uh, get your tickets. We've already sold some. Can you believe that? I know. Before we even knew it had gone live, exactly. You hadn't even signed the contracts, and you and people are already buying uh, tickets, which is uh, pretty impressive. Pretty before impressive. you go, Ben, where can people find out more if they have, if they've got kids in the Essex area and they want to get their kids active? We're based, we're based all over. We've got one in Cardiff, Milton Keynes, uh, Chelmsford. Lower Stoff, Leyston, Great Yarmouth, Deptford. Uh, so we're, we're spaced out and we'll soon hopefully have a lot more um, around the UK. So it's just EA Gymnastics online and um, 
they're able to do that or if they run a gymnastics club and they want to qualify and ensure themselves it's gym club solutions there you go gym club solutions fantastic Brilliant. thank you for being on the show mate really appreciate it thank you for having me well there you go that's ben on the business well there's a bit of a turnaround because i thought it, uh, the more it went on the more i like that business that's good isn't it mm. i think and it goes to prove that even if you're in low uh, barrier to entry sort of business models find the ways to build the moats around the business absolutely because this could be something that you know for 1800 quid people could go and compete with him by renting out or subletting a bit of space in a in a leisure center but as you say when you get to the point where you've got i think when you put chunky stuff around businesses people yeah. go that's proper yeah yeah for well, sure they've got signage and they've and got buildings and they've got car parking space like, and oh, gives you there. exit value yeah and all the things that you can do to increase the exit value even if you have no intention of exiting uh, will make your business more profitable i mean I, 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 there's a little thing you said there and i thought oh this guy is you know more higher barrier to entry thinking he wants to go further is yeah i'm going to take a twenty thousand square foot building at 15 grand a month rent not many people will do that no well there you go if you have enjoyed the podcast please feel free to like and subscribe and all that oh. kind of good stuff should we just quickly grade him oh of I course like i've that. nearly forgot it again i can't believe it. i'm only here to do one thing uh, those of you are regular listeners when we can remember we do this thing called the eight traits of great entrepreneurs and we just see if they have all the eight traits and um jb we're going to do that now we're going to have some we jingles are. for the the eight traits of the greats there we go so uh eight traits of great entrepreneurs <laughs> This is a bad jingle. I just hit, I just hit the button. I just like hope it. for the best. Um, starting with the end in mind. Do you think he done that? Ooh. I think he is. Yeah, okay. We'll give him that. Yeah, I think he's getting So he got one point. Uh, passionate about their cause. He's been doing it since he was about six, wasn't he? So, yeah. yeah he's passionate about uh, gymnastic, gymnastic stuff. Um, <laughs> gymnastic stuff. Un, uh, untold amounts of resilience. I Ooh, think. I think. I don't, he, know, I don't know if he's even been tested yet, but I think he's pushing forwards, isn't he? Yeah, I so, think yeah. he's got that. Doing Master well so relationships with people. Oh, he, we only spoke to him for a short period of time. He seemed like a lovely fella. Commercial awareness, no. No, he did, wow. He's not producing management information. He doesn't really know what he's making. No, fair enough. But you he's know, going to be from the 8th of the month. I, I think that's he's what working. I love. Jokes aside, and we do have a lot of jokes, and jokes aside for the people who hate the jokes on YouTube, but the fact that he's listened to free content and actioned it, and from the 8th of next month, he's going to know his business better because he's listened to you gabble on for a bit. That's good, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. They innovate so they don't evaporate. Is he an innovator? Oh, I would say so. Yeah, he's got the okay. insurance and the clothing and all that stuff. Then master marketeer, he done some basic network. <laughs> this is Sorry, like, we just take a moment to I appreciate just, it. this jingle's got worse. <laughs> oh, do you know who I think? It's like a mouth trumpet. <laughs> 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 I, I feel like Axel Foley from yeah, Beverly Hills Cop was just going to walk in. <laughs> it's still Roly Poly. <laughs> to finish um, off the gymnastic style of the show. Master marketeer. I, I don't think I want to give him. He's not a master. He might understand some basics, but he's not done no Google ads. He's done no Facebook. He doesn't no, he's get not, but, you know, paid ads yet. No. Yeah, no. I don't think he's a master marketeer, no. but he, he un and they stay teachable and curious. I think by being on the podcast, he is. 100%. I, I'm going to give him half of that because. Okay. Oh, he's you definitely teachable think... and curious. All right, he's getting yeah, the whole one. he can one. have that one. So he got six out of eight. Six out of eight. Fantastic. He's got six traits of great entrepreneurs. Fantastic. And, we could, and that's what of... we could do. We could, when people come to the event live, when they come yep. to see it live at Leicester Square, we could put people together. Their seating arrangement could be based on how they scored in the traits. There you go. So you can have all the threes together, all the fours together, and the higher you score, the closer to the front you get. Yeah. Ah, there you go. It's a terrible idea. We're Thanks for listening. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you are listening on any audio platform, please give us a review. Um, it helps more than you know. Anything you'd like to say before we say goodbye? No, thanks. Thank, thank you once again for the gift that you keep giving to entrepreneurship. Your oh, time, thanks, energy. Sir. It's you know, goodbye from him. Face. And, and it's, it's goodbye, goodbye from him. Bye. <laughs>